Hey guys, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Larry Casella from AmmoNYC.com. Now today's gonna be awesome. We're heading out to Wallingford, Connecticut to look at this car right here. This is a 1994 Mercedes S600 V12. Very rare car. Now, this is a lead from my buddy Levin. You remember him. We got the Audi GT. We got the BMW 2002 and of course his work truck. He's the guy that manages and works on all my lifts here. Absolutely fantastic dude. This car is his grandmother's. And so he said, hey, why don't you come out and take a look at this and bring it back to the studio today. So. I'm super pumped for that and a whole lot more in this episode of Drive and Protect. Big thank you to my sponsor, Shopify, for not only helping me run AmmoNYC.com's website, but for giving us the opportunity to travel to find cars and stories like this one here. More on this later. Hey, 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 hey. Look how excited. What's up, man? Hey, Larry. Hey, Long time no see. You again. Yeah. Yeah, hey, your, biggest, your biggest fan here. Come to the star of the show right here. Oh, yeah. It's like she's never seen you before. <laughs> yeah, so Grammy's had this for a while. She, uh, you know, she'll probably tell you, let me actually grab her real quick. Ho. Oh. That is a shocking smell of mothballs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was um, my mother's late husband's. Uh, he bought it in 2004. It's a 1994 S600. Um, so we've had it about 18 years. Uh -huh. He drove it about 10 years. Had fun, you know, specialty type of occasions. Yeah. Um, but then when he took ill, uh, he didn't drive it much. So it hasn't been really driven for about eight years. Got it. Um, I haven't moved it. I haven't tried starting it or anything like that because I did not want to do any damage to, you know, the engine or the tranny on it. Yeah, that's smart. Outside is riddled with spider webs, and the inside has white mold on the seats, the door panels, the glove box, headliner, and Thanks so on. The engine, the same sort of thing. Spider webs everywhere and mice. remnants uh, of mice activity. So this is going to be a project for sure, but it does need a new home. There's definitely some work that needs to be done, but of course. Let's, um, let's push it out into the light because I can't really see anything in here. Your, I, yeah. your lights are blinding me at the moment, so let's... Uh, I got the key. Put <laughs> it into neutral. Got it. Uh, it's straight, so we'll just push it straight back. Oh, God, I have here. <laughs> All right, we're in light. Nothing seized. No. Yeah, that, that's Whew. huge. Nope. No, I think it's perfect. Oh, these are mirrors back here. Look at that. Oh, a cup holder? What the? I guess this car gave someone heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> it's all electric. He has a Star Wars sound effects on it. So it sounds like the fighter. Well guys, the car's on the lift. We're gonna be heading back to the shop right now, get this thing cleaned up. I couldn't be more excited. All right, guys, I'm taking a little break from the Volvo you can see back there. We're getting really close and I'm down here checking my phone. I have an app, of course, on the app is Shopify. I can actually run my business away from my actual business. That's what makes it so amazing. Likewise, Shopify is allowing me, like this video here, to come down far away and actually detail cars, have a lift, stay overnight, eat food, have all that kind of stuff. So a huge thank you to them. If you're unfamiliar with Shopify, they're one of, if not the biggest e-commerce brand. They've changed the way that I do business. I mean that sincerely. I started in 2011, I had a couple other groups and they were pretty good, but the back end work was really hard. I took a lot of time to run all that. Now about three years, two and a half, three years ago, I switched over to Shopify. It changed everything for me. It is so easy, especially as an entrepreneur, producing and spending all this time creating a product and then having to actually get it out there to the public. That space between the two of those things is very daunting and scary for an entrepreneur. Someone like me, I didn't really know anything about websites. Shopify has made it so simple. I have a really cool opportunity to find cars in the woods and put them back on the road. That's like a dream come true. And it's, I'm able to do that with the help of Shopify. So if you guys want a 14 day free trial, click the link below. As always, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the episode. Now, earlier in the week, we picked up the car from Levin and we dropped it off here. I came out this morning to push it inside because we're going to do the full detail. There's not a cloud in the sky, super bright. And look what I found. Now inside the garage, it was super shady, so I couldn't see it. This is what we call a detailer's signature. Somebody probably took 
a woe pad, probably rotary, and just went up, leaned it on its side, just and just ground away. So basically, I have to really polish the heck out of this thing to remove all the light imperfections, one thing. And then second thing is, of course, taking out the swirl. So this is gonna be super fun. Let's bring her inside. With the 6,000 pound beast on the lift, all I can really see is the swirls, the spider webs, and every crease and crevice filled with dirt. Step one is pretty simple. Remove the wheels and see what's living on the undercarriage and the engine compartment. Next, I power wash the undercarriage and the wheel wells first to see what I'm working with and just to kind of remove all the spider webs and junk. For the foamer, I used Brute Wheel Soap, a bit of Boost Anti-Salt Additive, and then a little bit of Titan 12 Degreaser. Next, I used the undercarriage scrub brush with degreaser to agitate the 10-year-old grime underneath before power washing once again. Finally, I used compressed air and a blue towel to clean up the last bits of trapped water before focusing on the calipers, suspension, and plastic wheel wells. Next, I repeated the same process on the engine and found plenty of acorns in the manifold before soaping everything up and giving it a healthy scrub down with the wheel well scrub brush, the wheel brush, and of course the mini woolly for the super tight spots. Once done, I rinsed the soap and degreaser off the engine and focused on the exterior paint. We'll come back to the engine again a little bit later, but outside I rinsed and now foamed the paint. For the wash, I squirted foam into a bucket with a blue microfiber wash towel. In the tight spots, I'm using an interior brush to agitate the emblems, brushy, brushy, brushy. the gas fill, seams, and crevices. After the rinse, I use compressed air and a towel once again. Now this step is really important. It's not just blowing water off the car. You're sort of doing this in advance of polishing and it helps you have a clean pad later on, which will lead to a, a cleaner polishing. I mean, you're not gonna have any swirls and scratches that are abnormal. So blowing out as much junk as you can in this process is really important. Next step is to clean the wheels on the stand with ammo plumb first, then worked it in with two tier brushes on both the face and the rubber. I repeated the same process on the inner barrels, which were caked with years of brake dust. I used the undercarriage brush first, and this one has the inner red bristles. They're a little bit stiffer, but because the condition was so bad, it was a good idea to use it here. It didn't scratch, but I did need to sort of kick it up another notch. So instead, I used the green scrub pad next for more aggression to kind of scrub and get all that junk off there. And it looked much better. As you can see, it was just pouring off the wheel. When I was done, was it perfect? Not really, but it did look a hundred times better and I only had three more to go.
With the outside now clean, I started the interior by first placing a sodium chloride tablet inside to help kill the odor before beginning my cleaning routine. As you can see, once the tablet is placed in the water, it turns yellow and emits a gas. So keep the doors closed so that it can do its work. After 20 minutes or so, remove the cup and you'll see inside that the tablet has been dissolved. Step one on an interior of this condition, I mean, it's pretty moldy and pretty gross, is to coat everything in lather first. Scrub it in with an interior brush, sort of agitate everything. You'll see it start to turn white, meaning it'll create a lather. Then immediately hit it with the steam machine to create that heat and that extra cleaning power. Once everything is done, then dry it with a microfiber towel and compressed air thoroughly. Now, at this point, once the door looks absolutely clean, our last safety step is to coat the material and restore disinfectant. You must allow it to sit for about two minutes or so wet before wiping it off. This step will kill the bacteria, but be sure to read the directions on the back of the bottle. For step two inside, I vacuumed up as many acorns and mouse poop as possible just so I didn't have to lay in it as I was cleaning everything else. It's very likely you'll need to follow up later on with another vacuum, so keep that in mind. But for now, just pick up everything you can in round number one. Only thing left to do is to clean, steam, and disinfect everything else on the interior. Out in the driveway, I clean the removable mats and then power wash the trunk mat as well and check out the river of urine that came out. So disgusting. And the aroma was exactly like you might imagine 10 year old poop and pee might smell like. Okay, now that the interior is clean and disinfected, it smells much better. Let's focus on the paint. As you can see on the outside when it was in the sun, there are holograms everywhere. Now there's a huge difference between holograms, which are caused by rotary polishers tilted up on the side and you're sort of grinding them down versus something like swirls or what I call love marks, meaning you're wiping and washing your car and oh, all of a sudden you have a little bit of a mark and it sort of accumulates over time without proper lubrication, whether it be soap or spray wax, that kind of thing. In this case, holograms are a little bit more challenging to get out. Why? Because the machine actually had pressure and rotation and sort of ground into the paint. As you can see, it's what we call a detailer signature. It's kind of a joke amongst detailers where you don't really want to do that. You can see it afterwards. So what we have to do to take that out is be a little bit more aggressive. So in this case, usually I use a, a one-step polish and kind of try to manipulate two pads and, and, and take out the least amount of paint possible. This one I have to kind of turn and burn. I really have to remove the swirls, then come in and polish. So this is going to be a two-step process. It's going to take a long time. Plus, there's a ton of real estate here, so we got a lot to do. First, I measured the paint and found the hood to have nearly double the amount of paint as the rest of the car with 10 to 14 mils versus about 5 to 8 mils. To get a better idea of what pads are needed and the results of the work, I created a 50-50 on the hood. For this, I'm using a yellow wool pad and blue compound, which would be considered a half step up in aggression, then finishing with a yellow pad and yellow polish. 
Remember, the pad blowout on this particular car is critical, especially because it's super soft paint. I repeated the two-step process on the rest of the car, but I ran into some super deep scratches on the passenger rear door that were white. Typically, when you see white or you can feel a scratch with your fingernail, there really isn't much that can be done with polish to get it out because the white indicates that there isn't any paint left to polish. It's sort of a catch-22. So it's gone. It's too deep. There's nothing you can do. So typically, a touch-up is really only your next viable solution in most cases. Now, the next day on the weekend, I called in my buddy, Jim, who's really good with Mercedes to try to help me figure out what's going on with this thing. How do I get this thing started? First thing, he opened up the air box and of course, packed with acorns and the engine, of course, wasn't getting fuel as well. So we had to try to pump out all the old fuel in the gas tank and put new stuff in. And by the way, you can tell it's old gas because it, it smells absolutely horrible, like some sort of turpentine or, or something, but it definitely doesn't smell like gas. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna take the key out of the ignition while you're working on it. Anyhow, after playing with the oil and replacing the battery and now the new fuel, we actually got it to start with the help of starting fluid, which was great, but the new fuel that we had just put in wasn't making it to the engine, meaning the engine was only running on the starting fluid. So we had to figure out what was going on with the fuel pumps and the fuel filter. Mises. When I lifted the car underneath, Jim disassembled a few things and we got access to both the pump and the filter and realized that these things were just clogged and needed new ones. So we had to order new ones and wait for them to come in. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Top pump's done. With that, we were in a bit of a holding pattern, so I continued polishing the next day. And because this thing really isn't a Brabus, I had to remove the emblems in the side sticker or I was going to lose my mind completely. To do this, I used braided fishing line and ran it behind the letters and sort of just sawed back and forth to remove them. When you get them off, you're gonna have a leftover adhesive, which is totally normal. Same thing on the sides as well. Now to remove the glue, the best thing that you can do is use boiling water, but of course, make sure your paint can handle it. Pour the boiling water on the adhesive and just give it a few seconds to soften the dried up glue. From there, use a red plastic razor blade to quickly remove the double-sided tape. And as it cools down, it's gonna become harder to remove. So just add more water as necessary. The little bits remaining can be cleaned up with rapid remover, your hand, and a plastic blade once again, with the understanding that you are gonna to need to polish after this process, so keep that in mind. To that point, notice the scratches in the halo before polishing and then immediately afterwards, night and day difference. And now it doesn't have a badge that it shouldn't be wearing. So my brain is happy. One of my favorite parts of polishing a swirled out car like this is when it's super sunny, you push it outside and you do a 50-50 to really get the understanding of before and after and how much value polishing brings to hopefully the new owner. Then I two-stepped the driver's side just like the rest of the car and the heavy swirls were removed and it looked fantastic. With the paint now done, I polished out the rims to add a bit of life back to them before coating with Ammo Gelee Pro. Not perfect, but they looked much better than before. Before reinstalling the cleaned up wheels, I added mud tire dressing to the wheel wells to add a deep, rich look inside that will create contrast against the shiny wheel.
With my three inch polisher already out for the wheels, I quickly polished up the engine frame to sort of spruce it up a bit. And the difference was worth the two minutes it took to do it. Lastly, I polished the chrome trim by hand with my polish. Ew. And then of course coated the entire car in Reflex Pro. After that, I dressed the rubber tires in mud and added Frame Pro to the engine bay plastic because they had a rough texture. Just keep in mind, don't use frame on smooth plastic bits. This was a rough finish and it worked out great. With the S600 now looking absolutely amazing, you can dive into the paint, we still had a problem. It didn't run and we were waiting for the parts. After the next day or so, Jim arrived to disassemble the old pumps and filter with the new parts from my buddy Axel. When he finally got them off, they were totally clogged up and it makes sense. So no fuel was actually making it to the engine, which is why it only ran again on starting fluid alone. So naturally on startup, we tried again and the battery was dead, so I had to plug in a jump pack, but we did eventually get it running on its own. There it goes. You can feel it. Wow. After a few minutes of testing and prodding and making sure everything was safe, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a quick test ride over to Bobby's place to see if he'd be interested in yet another movie car. On the way in and up the driveway, his door was actually open, so I made a grand entrance. Bobby, do I have a car for you? You got every gangster car, but you're missing this one. This car. <laughs> we just got a call for this car. It's a perfect car. The perfect car for that movie we need. Yeah. Well, you're in luck because uh, I'm moving. Yeah, yeah. I'm moving it for uh, an older woman. She's trying to yeah. get rid of it. I wanted to clean it up. As soon as it was done, I said we got to go drive it over to Bobby. Yeah. What do you think? It's the right home for it. All right. I see a lot of Larry loving that one. <laughs> Thanks again, Larry. Good man, good man, good man. So all's well that ends well. My job here is done. The car is off to a new home. I put Bobby in touch with the owner to add the V12 S600 to his amazing collection of movie cars. Well, guys, we're all done, and the S600 has found a new home with Bobby the Auto King. Hopefully, you're going to see this thing on the big screen very soon. Now, if you have a car that needs some help, you know where to find me, Larry at AmmoNYC.com. As always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week.